Father, to the God of Israel, of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And the reason why we say we give praise of our God of Israel because that's what his name is. He gave us his name. And most of the world really don't know nothing, know nothing about that. Like this is the first night of the Feast of Unleavened, unleavened Bread. Comes after Passover. We had Passover last night. But we want to make sure y'all understand what's going on. We're going to read this book because if I talk too long, I might mess it up. <laughs> but these feasts are the Lord's feasts. These are not the Jews' feasts. These are not uh, they, the feasts for the, supposed to be for the Word to make sure you observe it. When we say feast, we're talking about holy days. Like the world celebrates Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, those days are not found in the Bible at all. Those, day, those days are made up from the for, uh, made up by the world. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that you understand who you praise. Don't be praising Satan, think you praising God. Mm -hmm. Because Satan is very deceptive. Very deceptive. And what he does is he slaps Jesus' name on it. And most people say, when you say Jesus, you hold you in there. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. He has certain statutes, certain laws, certain ordinances that we have to go by. So he can recognize who his people is. That's how that's what happened to Noah in his day. God destroyed the whole earth but eight people, Noah and his family, because he looked down there and he seen Noah doing what he's supposed to do. And this today, today is getting almost like Noah's day. Well, matter of fact, it, it, it's already there. But we got to make sure that God sees what we are doing so he'll protect us. That's why we took the bread and the wine last night, Passover, so he can protect us through this evil. Because Satan got his followers out there just to take whatever little knowledge you get from this book out of your mind with the cares of the world. Bills, family, all this stuff is supposed to, all this stuff designed to take you from what's going to get you salvation, which is the knowledge of God. So we're going to turn to Luke chapter 14 and verse 16 to understand about these feasts. These feasts are very important. He always goes to his people, Israel, first. To make sure they understand what they're supposed to do. And Israel, which are the so-called Negroes in America, give the word of God to the world. But we have been taught the world way, pagan way. So we're going to start with Luke chapter 14 and verse 16. Very important here. Very important here. And this is what Jesus talked about now, his great son. Go ahead. Then said he unto him, Yes, sir. A certain man made a great son and bade many. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. This great supper is the supper that we taken upon ourselves to follow today. We following all the suppers of feast of the Lord. He tells his people to go out and invite them to the supper. This supper is symbolic to the coming of the Lord. But if you don't understand whether it be at the right time, you can be somewhere wrong. So we try to make sure you understand that these feasts are very, very important. And he takes it to us first. This is what he said right here. Go ahead. Verse 18. And they all with one accord began to make excuse. Yes, sir. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. See, the Lord put his feast out there, so he tells us, go invite people. That's why I always try to invite people, but they give me an excuse. I got to work, or I ain't got nobody to keep my kids, or I'm tired, or I just don't feel like, I don't feel like this is right. It ain't about your feelings. It's about the knowledge. Get out your feelings. The knowledge of it. 
So each one of these people started giving excuses of why they can't come. I got to go to my job. Okay, go to your job. But when the salvation hit, the Lord going to bring that back up to your memory. This is what you traded salvation for. To go work on your job. Or to do what your husband say, your wife say, your kids say. It doesn't matter. The Lord is number one. Period. And most people feel they employ it more than they fear God. Go ahead, brother. And another said, I have bought five yoke of ox. Yes, sir. And I go to prove prove them. Uh -huh. I pray thee, have me excused. Go ahead. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So we said, they give you an excuse as the excuse of why they can't come to the Lord's son. Go ahead. So that that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, to the, Lord, I, the Lord was very angry. After that servant came by, he said, Lord, I invited all these people, but they gave me all these excuses. And God was mad. Jesus was very mad at this time. Just like when we invite people, they, they show us off. Like we crazy. Like we doing something weird. Yes, we're doing something weird because we understand the truth. The truth is not in the world. And what they're doing today, we've been lied to for so long. The truth looks like what? A lie. It always. Until you read. Go ahead. Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in either the poor. Yes, sir. And the main and the halt and the blind. Go ahead. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. He told him, go out, since his people wouldn't come, he said, go out and invite everybody from the poor, the sick, the lame, the blind. It doesn't matter, just invite them, because salvation is on the line. He tried to make sure everybody gets the opportunity to understand we're supposed to take part of his holy feast. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and Compel them to come in, Go ahead. that my house may be filled. Yes, sir. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. See, this is very serious. He said, none of these men that was bidden, meaning asked to come, and they rejected him, turned him down, shall not taste of his supper, which is the kingdom. Every these by the Bible written very metaphors and symbols. The last, the supper, where he said, I'm going to take this bread and wine which we had on Passover. He said, I'm going to take that in my father's kingdom. That's what we're trying to get to, to his father's kingdom. We get the Jesus kingdom first and then the father's kingdom. So he compelling Israel, telling them, come, come, come. Like I'm pretty sure y'all invite people, and they come up with all kinds of excuses. All right. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. Let's look at the feast and the ordinance and what we're supposed to be doing. Leviticus chapter 23. This is the issue at hand. We're trying to learn. We're trying to learn what we're supposed to be doing. Leviticus. Chapter 23, we're going to start with verse 1. Or turn to your table of contents. The first couple of books in the New Test Old Testament. Go ahead, bro. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, yes, sir. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Understand that these are Jesus Christ's feasts. Not the Jews. Not nobody. These are his feasts. This is what he put down and said, we must follow. Just like he told them in the New Testament, go out and invite these people to my feast. But each one of them turned him down. I got, I just got married. Or I just broke some ground on some land. I got to go farm. Or I just got to do whatever. This is very important. These are the feasts of the Lord. Jesus. Go ahead. Six days 
shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest Go ahead. and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord and all your dwellings. Even the seventh day is Sabbath, which, which is Sabbath, not Sunday, is a feast. You don't supposed to do no work on that day. Just like God holy feast, we refrain from our work. We focus on Him on His feast day. But a lot of people, I understand you're going to hear this, you're going to hear a lot of instruction. Just take it one step at a time. One step at a time. You're not going to be able to accomplish, master this in one day. Or do we go in the year? It's took two people a while to get this stuff right. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, uh -huh. the holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in your seat, in their seasons. See, it's a season. That you should do these things. And this, this is the calendar. Leviticus chapter 23 tells you when the year is start. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim in their season. It's a time. And I was talking to a brother, a uh, Church of Christ guy, because I know they take communion every Sunday. And I was asking him, why do y'all do that? He, he quoted the scripture saying, he told me about the scripture saying, whenever you come, amongst each other, this is what you're supposed to do, take bread and wine. I said, no, go to Leviticus chapter 23, he'll tell you when you're supposed to take the bread and wine. The 14th day of the first month, which is what we did last night. Go ahead, brother, read that. Uh, verse 5. In the, fourth, in the 14th day of the first month at evening uh -huh. is the Lord's Passover. Did we do that last night? Yes. Now we at the 15th day. This is the next day what we're supposed to be doing. Go ahead. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Yes, sir. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no survival work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no survival work there is. This feast have a first day and they have a seventh day. The first day is tonight. I last all the way to Friday evening. This is the first day. God starts the day from evening to morning. When the sun goes down, the day starts. It doesn't when the sun goes when, when it's 12 o'clock, the new day don't start as the world teaches. God day starts when the sun goes down. And we will touch on that a little later. But this is what we're supposed to do in this feast. Refrain from work. I'm not going to work tomorrow. I'm resting and relaxing. We're going to have this feast. This is what we're supposed to do. For some of you just learning this, it's going to take a little while. Don't worry about it. Keep your head in the book so you can get stronger every day. That's right. Every day. Mm -hmm. And he talks about leaven. Leaven <laughs> is talking about um, leaven is talking about yeast. Just like bread. We don't eat bread with yeast in it for seven days. So, so whatever bread you have in your house, you can come in contact with some bread with yeast in it. Don't mess with it. It's very important. But let me go, let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 5. Let me show you what this bread symbolizes. And then we're going to go back and understand the ordinance or the laws or the rules of the feast. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 5. Take your time. This is a whole buffet right here in this Bible. You can't eat it all in one night. You can't eat it all in one day. It's going to take some time. Just like you go to school. You go to high school, it take you 12 years to get a high school diploma. To graduate, just like this Bible. It's going to take you a lifetime to graduate from this Bible. And only when you time you graduate from this Bible, and when Jesus comes back, we forever learn. So don't think you're going to master this. You can't master it. You just do the best you can and keep studying. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to start with verse 5. Let's look at this leaven that Jesus wants us to understand. Go ahead. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Uh -huh. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the letting of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. 
he using a symbol, a symbolism, just like we say LeBron James is a beast. Is he a little beast? No. It's just showing that he plays with strength. He plays like no up. So this leavening he's talking about is symbolized of sin. Sin that gets in your body and rises up inside of you and make you sin, commit adultery, fornicate, lie. All those things are symbolic to leaven. That's what he, this feast symbolizes that. He wants you to purge it out, get it out your life. But listen to what he said here. Go ahead. Verse 7. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Go ahead. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, uh -huh. why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Jesus said, I ain't talking about bread. Bread is, a, is just a teaching tool for you to understand. He said, why are, you, why are you talking about bread? I'm not talking about bread. I just gave you an example of leaven or yeast when it rises up. It becomes puffed up. It creates bread. Just like sin, when it rises up inside of your mind, you go out and do search, you go out and do simple stuff like lie, steal, commit adultery, not honor your father and mother. All these things are like leaven. And what it does, it ultimately kills you. That's right. And most of all, it's gonna kill you in that spiritual death if you don't repent from it. What I mean by that spiritual death, the lake of fire. Don't nobody, I don't think nobody wanna go there. So we must learn what's going on. Go ahead, bro. Verse 9. Do ye yet not understand, neither remember the five loaves of five thousand? Yes, sir. And how many baskets ye took up? Yes, sir. Neither the seven loaves or the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Jesus telling you, don't you remember how I fed this large multitude with just this little amount of bread, this little amount of food? I stressed it. This is not what I'm talking about. Just bread. I'm talking about have faith in what I told you to have faith in. Let me do the hard work, which is protect you. Follow this. Don't get that leavening or that sin inside of your body when you ultimately hurt yourself. As for parents, you not just only hurt yourself, you hurt your kids. That's my biggest, one of my biggest fears. I don't want to leave my kids or my family the wrong way. We in a lake of fire, and they say, Dad, why you ain't tell us? Oh, Mama, why you ain't tell us? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have it on me. So this is what I'm doing first to leave my household. And then if I can help somebody else, okay, come tag along. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread? Jesus, I ain't talking about no bread. Go ahead. That ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's what he said, leaven, the sin. Go ahead. Then understood they how that he bade them, bade them not beware of the leaven of bread. He said, then they understood about leaven. He's going to give you an interpretation of leaven. Go ahead. But of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. When he's talking about doctrine, he's talking about this false, sinful doctrine of these preachers. Amen. If they ain't coming by this book teaching you no laws, no holy day, keeping you about no teaching you about no dietary law, what you can eat and what you can't eat, that is living. This is what this feast is all about. Purging it out. Get it out your life. It just symbolize, it's just a symbol, a metaphor. If you're in school, you got metaphor to describe stuff. It don't literally mean that LeBron James is a beast. He just plays like more, he just plays better than the rest of the people. Now let's go back to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15. So write these scriptures down. Go back and refresh your memory of them. This feast is just more than getting together eating. It symbolizes something. So you'll understand how to not offend your God. Exodus chapter 12. We're going to start with verse 15. Go ahead. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. 
Mm -hmm. Even the first day ye shall put away the leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leaven bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. That is a very serious statement there, y'all. If you got some bread that was some yeast in your house, get it out, man. Don't go put it in your car. Chug in your car. Don't go put it nowhere. He said, get it out, destroy it, get it away. Because he want to make sure that you understand. Something as small as bread. If you can't get bread out your house, how you gonna get sin out your life? I paid a dollar ninety nine cents for the loaf of bread. You talking about to throw this bread away? We, you arguing about a dollar ninety nine cents for a loaf of bread and your salvation on the line? And most people have them thoughts in their head. Just simple. Go ahead, bro. And Say then, and then the first day. That shall be a holy convocation. That's where we at today. This is the first day we having a holy convocation. Convocation means a church day. That's all it's saying. Get together like he told you to. Go ahead. And in the seventh day, that shall be a holy convocation. That's what we're going to do next week. On Wednesday evening, we'll have the same convocation. It's two days. We do the first day and the seventh day. Go ahead. No, ma no matter of work shall be done in them. Mm -hmm. Say that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. He said, no work. Don't work. You can't be working, going, earning wages. That's what he's talking about on that day. Hey, I didn't write this. I'm just giving it to you. Go ahead. And ye shall observe the feast of all every bread. Yes, sir. For at this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Right. Therefore... Shall ye observe this day in your generation by an ordinance forever? How long is forever? There's no time. Only. So we must we must keep this feast in this in this ordinance forever. Meaning that you follow the instructions. It's simple. Read it and do it. That's all it is. He said, keep this forever. Go ahead. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at uh -huh. evening. Ye shall eat unleavened bread yes, sir. until the until the one and twentieth day of the month at evening. See the first day of the fourteenth month, they're talking about we ate unleavened bread on the Passover. That's the first day. Then the twenty-first month we're talking about the next week when we take the last day of the feast of unleavened bread, we still gonna be doing it on that day. Don't get confused now, it's the fourteenth day, fifteenth day, and the twenty-first day. That's all it is. You eat this bread. Go ahead. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your house. He keeps stressing this. If you can't get bread out your house, how you gonna get in the kingdom? That simple thing is bread. You don't know, I don't wanna waste that now. Bread costs too much. I guess bread is more valuable than salvation. Go ahead. Hmm. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, mm. whether he be a stranger or born in the land. When he say stranger, that covers everybody. Or born in the land, he's talking about Israel, our people. Everybody. If you eat this bread, if you don't remove it out your house, he cutting you off. He cutting you off. Just understand, some people, mind and soul, uh, warp. That they can just think about today. With this feast, you better be careful with folk offer you, because Satan's gonna be out there and say, hey, come on, eat this big man, come on buy it for you. <laughs> come on down here, we, we it always happens when you're on a fast or when you try to follow these feet, somebody wanna buy you something to eat. It's Satan, I'm telling you. Just wanna buy you something to eat. Like, man, it's free. I can't pass it up. Hey, I take a rain check on that, bro. That's it. <laughs> Let's go to Exodus chapter 13. Same book, verse 1. Lord, real, real serious about this. I just want to make sure you understand it because believe me, my soul ain't going to be, it, it, I don't want him to tell you, Jeff, you didn't teach them. You are reliable, you are responsible for this congregation. I understand that. I want to make sure I tell it to you. Straight with no chasing. Mm -hmm. Unapproved. Let's go. 
Exodus chapter 13, we're going to start verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. All he tell is sanctification just set apart. Like I tell him, says, hey, you come with me. He sanctified with me. He with me. That's all he has set you apart from. Hey, I see Elsie about to get into trouble. Hey, Elsie, come on over here with me. I'm going to get you out. I'm going to sanctify you. Stay with me. I know what them guys are about. And that's what the Lord is saying. Sanctify yourself. Dedicate the firstborn of the one which is your kid to me. Understand what's going on. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt out of the house of bondage. Yes, sir. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leaven bread be eaten. See, what most people don't understand, like I told y'all to go back and look at that animated cartoon, Prince of Egypt. Go back and look at it. It got a lot of truth in it. That's our people. What happened to us when Moses took them out the land? This is what they're talking about. This is where the movies get it from. They didn't come up with this. This is the story right here in the Bible, what Moses did. When you go and read the Bible, go back and look at that movie. It, it'll give you a vision so you understand. Sometimes you got to make it plain enough so a child will understand. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I ain't trying to come again because I'm a simple man. I like simple stuff. But he's telling you, remember how I brought Israel out of the land, meaning that it was empty in slavery for 400 years and God brought them out and he said they had unleavened cakes. Why did they have unleavened cakes? Because he was going to give them the ordinance and the laws in the wilderness so they could follow his law to remember what he done for them which is brought them out of slavery. Go ahead bro. Verse 4. This day came ye out in the month Abel. That's what we're talking about. That's the first month of the year. Abel which is this month, spring. Jump down to verse, um, we'll keep going. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites. Yes, sir. And the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hivites, uh -huh. and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee mm -hmm. a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. All them highlights and Hittites did this people that was in the land of Israel. And I'm thinking that those were, those were the Africans, per se. If you want to learn the history of that, go back to Genesis chapter 10 and tell you the lineage of these people. But he said, I'm going to bring you into this land to keep this service. Go ahead. What service is he talking about? Go ahead. Seven days thou shalt eat on every brick, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. That's what we're doing today. We were remembering. If somebody remembers something I done for them, that make me feel special. Like he remember I took care of him, or I took care of him. That's how God said, "You remember what I done for you and your people." And if I remember, I'm gonna be able to protect you over anything. That's what we searching for. Go ahead. A leaven bread shall be eaten seven days. Yes, sir. And there shall no leaven bread be seen with thee. Neither shall that be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. So that means in your storage, that means in your trunk, your car, anything. Don't even have it around your house. I sell sacks in my shop. I got rid of all that bread. All that. Go ahead. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. So you can go to your kids and show them, this is the reason why we're doing it. Not because of what Jeff said. You're doing it because this is what the Lord has told you to do. So he can remember you. I tell you all the time, you're not following me. You're following this book, which is God's holy word. Go ahead. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand. And for a memorial between thine eyes. Yes, sir. That the Lord's law may be in thy mind. Yes, sir. For with a strong hand has the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. When he tell you a sign, that means that he recognizes you. He recognizes us, what we're trying to do. Keep the feast. 
When he recognized that we try to keep the feet, he'll order your steps in the way you're supposed to go. That's what we want. Yes. Go ahead. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in this season from year to year. From year to year, forever. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Jump down to verse 14. 14, go ahead. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand the Lord...